All right. How's everybody doing? Cool. Well, again, this is a true axe drill. It's a no-till drill. It is does have the capability to uh, to seed no-till into some pretty rough, heavy trash if you need to. I'll just point out a few things about the drill so that you can kind of understand what they are. There are three different seed boxes with this drill, and feel free to come up and take a look at these. This is the cool season seed box, and basically the adjustments that you make here for seed delivery are right here with this thumb screw, and you adjust the size of the opening. The center box is the fluffy seed box, and one of the things that you'll notice about this one, thanks Ben, is that uh, there's an active agitator in this seed box that actually moves seed through. Um, that's really critical with our fluffy warm season grasses like big blue stem and Indian grass. So this has a really active process in this particular seed box. The adjustments for this fluffy seed box are made over here with the sprocket that looks like the bike chain and sprocket system. So that's where you basically adjust the rate of speed for the delivery of different seeding rates for the fluffy seed box. We're going to focus our time more on the switchgrass side because that's what Ben and I calibrated this for yesterday. So this, uh, this ought to be fairly close if Ben didn't beat it up too much coming over. Um, this front seed box is really, really well suited to seeding switchgrass. It also works very well for seeding some of the small seeded legumes as well. If, um, if you kind of want to take a look at the seed box, there are eight individual compartments in this seed box. At the bottom of the box, there's kind of a, a, a little picker that the seed falls into, and then it's dropped down through these seed tubes. And it drops through the seed tubes, down through this set of double disc openers, and it's on those double disc openers where we have the depth bands. So it is those depth bands that Dave Stock was talking about that controls the depth of seed placement in the soil profile. And that is these little jewels right here. So that's a set of double disc openers. They're kind of shaped like a V, one on each side of the, of the drop point. And it cuts just a very narrow furrow. We call this a no-till drill. It's actually just a minimum tillage. It just tills a very narrow strip. Um, what, uh, what you'll notice here, we have two of these seed drop tubes removed. And we have taken a, a hanger bracket that we had made that slips in to one of the holes on the back of the drop tube and a little container that is what will catch the seed in. And so if uh, most people wouldn't get this fancy, but since we use this quite a bit and it's kind of precision seeding for us, um, this is the way we do it. You could actually use just a Ziploc bag and a, and a rubber band put it on there. Typically we would recommend that you would do all of these drop tubes, but for our purposes we're just going to do a couple of them. And uh, hopefully we'll be close. We'll be within 100 pounds, I'm guessing. Um, so so this, uh, this really is a very good quality drill and it's heavy duty. It has a, a quite a bit of weight to it. It does take a, a fairly good sized tractor to, to move it around especially if you're picking it up and moving it down the road. Um, on the opposite side is the drive wheel, which is where, where Ben's going to be working on there. Notice that if you look in this seed box, we have just put seed into two of the openings. Um, they're in individual compartments. We basically just didn't want to sweep seed up off the floor, so we didn't fill all of the compartments. Um, so we're getting a little bit lazy. But feel free to walk around this for just a few minutes Maybe just take a, a quick tour, go around this thing, see if there's any questions that you have, and then I'll talk specifically about this cedar box and we'll go through the calibration real quick. So get up here and take a real quick look. Yes, Sue? Is all that talk about depth plates? Yes. These are the depth bands right here on both sides. And you can see here that little razor yeah. edge. Yep, that's, what that's what cuts into the soil. Yeah. And that controls the depth that that planter plate the double disc opener goes into the soil. And then these press wheels follow right behind it and actually then pack the soil behind the, the drill as, uh, as you move across the field. So these are the, 
these are the press wheels that come behind the unit and pack the seed furrow down. Does a really good job of ensuring good seed soil contact, which is really critical for these smaller seeded species. Are there different size bands that you need different depths? Yes, they're actually you can actually change those bands and make the depth deeper or shallower. Um, we have, uh, I don't remember for sure how many, two or three or four other sets of these depth bands around for, for seeding different things, but this fits very well for, for most of our native warm season grasses. You know, I've never tried that, key, so I don't know the answer to that for sure. I'm sure you could. Um, never done it. And there as you're looking inside of that fluffy seed box, those paddles do a very nice job of moving the seed around and distributing those down into the, the drop, which then transfers down through the tube and down between the double disc openers. Adjustments again, I thought you said sure. something up there. Sure, yep. This is, again, this is a cool season grass seed box, and here's its adjustment for its seeding rate adjustment. For the fluffy seed box that is there that's open, the adjustment point is right here on this sprocket. And when we, uh, when we move this, you can see right here, here's the removal link. You can remove the link there, adjust it to the, to the sprocket, and you can either then move it this direction to increase the speed, move it that direction to decrease the speed. Okay, so so, what is that so this, this is actually what I'll talk about in just a minute because this is the adjustment for flow on the small seed box for the switchgrass. Yep. So that chain, yep. that's got to be a pain in the butt to try to move it, that. It actually is pretty easy after you take the link apart. It is, it, there's nothing easy about removing links and things, especially out in the field, but um, we try to do it inside where I can find the parts that I drop. Yeah. <laughs> Bummer. The other thing you'll notice on this side of the drill, this is the drive wheel of the drill, and there are actually two different mechanisms that cause this drill wheel, drive wheel to engage. One, if you look right behind here, you'll see that there is a pin that meets a welded shaft on the, actually on the drive shaft itself, that locks in place. And as you pull this out, this disengages the drive wheel, in theory. So now you can see that it's disengaged and that drive wheel, when it turns, it now won't spin any of the mechanisms to, to deliver seed. The other safety for the drive wheel has to do with this little shaft right here. If you don't have the drill set level, if you've got it up in the transport mode, or if you've got it to the point where it's not quite level, there's actually a shoe that contacts another plate that prevents this chain from turning. So it's actually a second stop mechanism, and it is right here. So there's a couple of, couple of safety devices on it to keep you from scattering seed down the road. Okay, got any other questions? Ben, you want to take the business into the handle? And let me take a look here. I did spin the wheel a little bit. We're good. Okay, so our calibration technique is to, is to rotate 13 revolutions. Um, we're not superstitious. So we go 13, actually, because it comes out pretty close to 100 feet, as I told you earlier. Ben's going to turn this 13 revolutions, so don't, don't distract Ben while he's counting. <laughs> Pull back a finger. Excuse me, Eric. <laughs> oh man, grass seeding humor.
All right, so what we'll do then is we'll just take these seed cups out of here. And now you can see basically how much seed was distributed out of those 13 revolutions into this singular seed cup. And that's over 100 feet? Yep, that would be about 98 feet and some change. Yeah, but that'd be about 100 feet of travel for one drill row. So you take 98 times, what is it, a 10 foot drill? It's an eight, yeah, actually eight, six foot, eight, yeah. Six six foot a, yeah. To give you your acreage. Yep. Now one, one thing I've seen, I've used several drills. Some of them as, some of them as they get closer to being empty, they don't put out as Yes, seed. you're right. Do you have this, that problem with this one? Um, typically what we try to do is keep it as full as we can. Because yeah. That, that's uh, huge. With yep, drills. it is. I forgot to get my calculator out. So we're going to be, this is pretty easy math actually, this is going to be right at 36 grams delivered for, for this particular effort. And our target if you look at the cheat sheet that I developed, our target was uh, 38.44 grams. Now that was our, that was our first, first effort. We'll do this again a couple more times and we'll get an average of those. So our first one was 36, right on the money. Why don't you just dump that back in there, Pam? All right, sir. So if you've never seen switchgrass seed and want to see it, if this has been keeping you up at night, you're thinking, wow, what does that stuff look like? There it is, Ann. One more thing you can check off your life list. <laughs> Don't have enough light here to run my solar calculator. That one was just a little bit higher, 39.6. Thank you, sir. All right, Ben. Yeah, you can actually see the empty ones beside it, maybe even see the mechanisms moving. Got it, Ben? Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. All right, our target was 38.44 grams to seed our preferred seeding rate. Our three-run average was 38.1 grams. So we're right on the money. So, yeah. Good job, Ben.
<laughs> we probably adjusted it yesterday four or five times, maybe. Yeah. And if you come over here, you can see the kind of the fine scale adjustment that you can make with um, with this small seed box, and it's it's just a wing nut, and then sliding this handle back and forth. And each of these individual notches makes a pretty big difference in the amount of seed that you put out, especially on these really small seeded plants. So you don't, you don't have to adjust that and move it very far to have a pretty significant impact on how much additional seed you're delivering. So for, again, these switchgrass is a great one because it's really easy to deal with. Um, it's, um, it flows pretty nicely. It doesn't bridge, which is one of the problems that you can get with some types of drills with, um, with the fluffy seed box. Um, big blue stem and Indian grass are probably the worst, but with this active agitation system, it does really well. The other thing you might notice if you're looking here, the, the coulters up front, you can actually drop these down and do a pretty good job of cutting through a lot of trash. So you can actually kind of open up a little area by dropping these down. And you'll notice that we've got the one on each side drop down just two or three inches below the others. Started doing that because in a lot of this firm soybean and round phrase soybean ground it's really hard to track yourself so we started dropping that just so it just to the point where it basically just brushes the ground so it is working like a marker for us and then we can come back around on our next pass and overlap our tires just a little and you kind of get a feel for how it needs to go to to keep your eight inch row spacing yeah the partitions in the box there was that, that way for yes yeah yeah, and like I say, typically what we would do is we'd fill that seed box up, but because I was getting lazy, I didn't want to sweep all the floor, so we just put it in the two that we're measuring. Have any other questions? Yes. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, some of these, and I don't know this one in particular, but some of these are gangable, so you can actually gang them together and and have a have a pretty you have them run too wide beside each other off the same drawbar. Why don't you explain why we have this size of drill? Um, we have this size of drill because um, we don't want anything bigger because when we run things down the road, this is a pretty nice width for us. Um, and so it, it doesn't cause us any real issues. Also, we have uh, generally just smaller type equipment. And when you start getting to larger uh, pieces of equipment like this, the weight gets to be a demand that uh, really tests our our tractors a little more. Um, when we do a lot of our small plot work, we do those in narrower rows, um, a little smaller than this. And uh, so this, this fits our needs pretty well. We don't typically do large, large fields, although we've, we've seeded 50 or 60 acre fields with this and it works very nicely. So. Yes? Yes. I, I, I think from, a, from an, an ease of use perspective and accuracy, probably one of the best things that people could do just in general would be to get a seed count for their seed lot and then use that, that particular seed count and calculate pure live seed that you have based on that seed count rather than a, a number that you, you might get. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So, and, and again, making it like the handout that I've given you, using 30 pure live seed per square foot, or if you wanted to cut that down or increase that, it's a pretty easy calculation. I think you can follow that on what I've handed you. So you could, if you know the number of seeds that you have, um, uh, what, what we do typically is 100 seed weight, and then we convert that 100 seed weight to number of seeds per gram. So that, that's a really good question. Other questions you have? Comments? Things you'd like to see? Thank you. Thank you.